In this video, we are going to test your attitude. Don't worry, it's not your attitude to driving. That's between you and your driving instructor. This is going to be a 20 question mock test on the category of attitude. Hi, I'm Dorian from Think to Success. I'm doing a study with me series where I'm gonna be covering all 14 categories to give you the best possible chance of passing your theory test first time. In this category, we are going to do the 20 question mock test on attitude. So we need to see what type of mindset you have when you're answering these questions. Before we dive into the mock test, we must remember what the theory test is about, what the DVSA are looking for. They are looking for safety, safety, yeah, you guessed it, safety, and common sense answers. Most pupils who tend to do the test sometimes choose the safe option, but it doesn't make sense because they're two similar answers. Your answer has to make sense as well when you are choosing it. If you are new to the channel, the way I do it, I tend to read the question, break it down, show you little hints, tips or tricks, little nuggets you can look for in the question and little nuggets you can look for in the answer. And that's what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna do a 20 question mock test. I'm gonna dive on to my desktop as usual and then we'll take it from there. So the first question in the attitude is you are approaching a red light at a puffing crossing. Pedestrians are on the crossing. When will the red light change? Puffins are sensors. That's what you must remember. You've got your toucans, your puffin, your pelican, your zebras and your tiger crossings and your traffic lights if you want to add that into the equation. So puffing our senses, the red light's gonna change when the person has fully crossed. That's what we're looking for, something along those lines. When a driver from the opposite direction reaches the crossing, no. When you start to edge forward onto a crossing, it's not safe to be edging forward, you shouldn't be doing that anyway, so it's not gonna be that. When the pedestrians have cleared the crossing, so when they've cleared, the sensor senses they're cleared and then it will change to red and amber. When pedestrian pushes the button on the far side of the crossing, when the pedestrian pushes the button on the far side, that's gonna let the sensor know there's someone there and it's gonna go from green, amber, red. And as I said, when the person has fully crossed, it will go to red and amber to get that's your preparation and then um, green, which is your maneuver, which you can go if it's safe to do so. You're in a line of traffic. What action should you take if the driver behind is following very closely? It doesn't say the traffic's moving, but let's assume the traffic is moving. If that's the case, you're gonna drop further back. You're gonna create a bigger gap between you and the car in front. Something along those lines is what we're looking for. Slow down, gradually increasing the gap between you and the vehicle in front, which is what we just discussed. Let me just explain that. The reason why you're creating a bigger gap between you and the car in front is just that if the car in front now stops suddenly, you can slow down gradually, so not to let the person hit their brakes heavily and go all go into the back of you. So you're always gonna create a bigger gap if the person is driving behind too closely. Signal left and wave the driver behind to come past. You shouldn't be waving anybody anyway that's not going to be safe. Moving over to position left or center is only position the car to turn right technically for those of you taking driving lessons. Ignore the driver behind and continue to travel within the speed limit. You can't ignore the driver behind. The way that I'll explain this on my driving lessons, if the eyes don't see the problem, you can't tell the brain what to do. Ignoring the driver behind and not paying attention, you don't know what he's up to so you really want to pay attention. Yes, he's close, so I'm going to create a bigger gap from the car in front, so that's the safest option. What should you do if you're being followed by an ambulance showing flashing blue lights? If the ambulance or fire engine, anybody with a flashing blue light is behind you, you need to move to the left when safe to do so. It's got to be when it's safe to do so. You can't just dive to the left, drive on the pavement, all those things that shouldn't be done. I know we see people doing it, but technically it's not correct. Brake harshly and stop well into the road. Obviously brake, once you've got harsh in, your, in the answer, it's wrong. It's not even worth reading on from that. Pull over as soon as it's safe to do so. Right, little tip, safe. What's the theory test about? Safety, safety, and what? Yep, safety. If you have safe, safety, 
safely in your answers, you have to shortlist it as a possible answer. It doesn't always work, but it's giving you the best possible chance of choosing the right answer. So shortlist it, so we're gonna tick that one and always read the other answers just in case there's something similar or a better version of it. Maintain your speed on course, you shouldn't be doing that. Accelerate hard to get away from it. You shouldn't be getting away from a blue light. Um, so it's gonna be that one. What should you do if a vehicle pulls out in front of you at a junction? So a vehicle pulls out in front of you. Remember we're talking about attitude here, okay? So flash your headlights and drive up close behind. Bad attitude, you should be flashing your lights. Accelerate past it immediately. Bad attitude doing that. Swerve past and sound your horn. Road rage, bad attitude doing that. Slow down and be ready to stop safe attitude doing that. So it's gonna be that one, slow down, be ready to stop. People pull out in front of you. I get people putting out in front of me and I haven't got L plates on when I'm driving. That's life, just let them get on with it. Don't let someone upset your day, by the way. You're being overtaken by a long, heavy laden lorry. What should you do if it's taking a long time for it to overtake? Change direction. No, don't change direction. Keep going in the same direction you want to go in. Slow down. Safest option, obviously slow down, let the lorry in. Hold your speed. If you're holding your speed, you're going to hold him out into the middle of the road, which is not safe. And if a lorry has to dive into the left to, to avoid having an accident with something oncoming, he's going to wipe you out. A lorry is bigger than you. It's going to win that battle every time. So don't even take up a battle with a lorry. Trust me on that. And speed up and definitely it's not going to be the safest option. Slow down is going to be the safest option in any given situation. If you're not sure what's happening, slow down. Give yourself time to think about it. This is driving we're talking about in the theory test. Obviously, it's going to be slow down. What should you do to avoid fuel spillage? Now, this is a weird question when it comes up week in, week out. But I'll explain why, depending on what answer they give. Check that your tank is under three quarters full. If you're going to fill your tank, you're going to fill it to the right amount. Um, you're not going to fill it to three quarters. It's hard to know if you fill it to three quarters from outside of the car anyway. Check that you've used a locking filler cap. That's a possible answer. So I'm going to tick it. Check that you've used a locking filler cap. So it's locked, it doesn't spill out. Check that your fuel gauge is working. You know it's working because that's why you've gone to the petrol station to fill up in the first place because you knew there wasn't enough in there. Check that the filler cap is still securely fastened. And this is what I mean by similar answer. That's why you've got to read all of them so you know that you've got all the options to choose from. So in this case, let me just read the top one. Check that you've used a locking filler cap. So you've used a locking filler cap, so it's locked, it's not going to spill out. Check that your filler cap is securely fastened. So you are making sure it's on properly and tightly. It's gonna be this one out of both of them because the bottom one is the safer one because you've checked to make sure it's put on properly. Not that you've used it, but it's securely fastened. So when you're going over speed humps, bumps and the rest of it, it's not gonna spill out and cause a car or van behind to skid. Which vehicle will use a blue flashing beacon? This comes up a lot. Let me just explain. Blue flashing beacon is the obvious ones. Your fire engine, police cars, and your ambulances. So sometimes they give you those options and sometimes they don't. Blue lights are only associated with human life. If it doesn't give you your obvious ones, your fire engines, police cars, ambulances, what you wanna do is work out which one of them saves a human life and that's the one you wanna go for. So let's take a look at what they gave us. Snowplow. Snowplow is going to be amber. If you didn't know, slow moving vehicles are amber lights. So that's snowplow with a bit amber. Breakdown recovery is going to be amber. Bomb disposal, human life. That's going to be the option. Motorway maintenance is slow moving and that's going to be amber. So these three, slow moving is amber lights. Life saving is bomb disposal, blue light. You are approaching an unmarked crossroad. How should you deal with the junction is unmarked, no lines. But technically, a crossroads, so a crossroads is four ways. It's no marks and no one's got priority on that situation. So it's gonna be something along the lines of slow down, careful consideration, depending on the answer they give you on that. So let's just work out which one that is. Slow down and keep to the right, makes no sense. Slow down and look both ways. That's a possible because we're slowing down. Give yourself time to think and we're looking both ways. Accelerate and keep to the middle, you can't do that because if a car's really coming the other way, you're asking for trouble. Accelerate and look to the left. It's a crossroad, so you definitely need to be looking both ways on that. 
so it's going to be that one and because it's got the keyword of slow down you're making the situation safer by slowing down gives yourself time to think as well what's happening you're driving on a clear night which light should you use if the national speed limit applies and there's a steady stream of oncoming traffic Right, on one of the previous videos I mentioned is they mentioned motorways. I'm just gonna read this question again and break it down for you guys. You're driving on a clear night, so it's clear. Which lights should you use if the national speed limit applies and there's a steady stream of oncoming traffic? Now, when they're asking this type of question, it's going to be dip lights or dipped headlights. They can word it either way, but it's the same lights. Dipped headlights or headlights, it's the same thing. Because it's clear, you're looking for dipped. If they want any other lights, fog lights, main beam, they have to give you more information so you can feed off of that. Because you've got a steady stream of traffic, we're looking for dipped headlights or headlights, depending on how they word it. So side lights, no, that's what you use when it starts to get a little bit dark. Fog lights, says in a word, when it's foggy, dip lights is what we just mentioned, and full beam headlights is when it's pitch black, no street light, and only you on the road. Right, you are driving a car that has a diesel engine. What kind of loose filler cap on your vehicle tank called? That's the similar question to what was asked previously about a filler cap. It's just worded differently. That's how the ferry test works sometimes. And that's why I always stress, do not memorize your answers. Understand the question. So when it's reworded, you know what they are looking for. When you memorize answers, similar to if you memorize the previous answer and they ask this question, it can throw you off. As we discussed in the previous question, you're using a filler cap to make sure it's securely fastened so the diesel doesn't leak out to cause a car to skid. So we're looking for something along those lines. It can make the road slippery for other road users, yes. It can increase level of exhaust emissions, no. It can improve your vehicle's fuel consumption, no. It can make the engine difficult to start, no. So it's gonna be the first one. You're in a one-way street and want to turn right. Where should you position your vehicle when there's two lanes? Little nuggets, read the question carefully. As I always say, read the question carefully. If you can take a step back, and pick out the little nuggets. Rather than reading the question, go for the answer. So read the question, take a step back, and try to work out the answer from the question in this one. For example, you're in a one-way street, want to turn right. Where should you position your vehicle when there are two lanes? If there's two lanes and you're turning right, yeah, you guessed it, it's the right-hand lane is what you're looking for. In the left-hand lane, no. Just left of center, that's turning right on a single carriageway. In the right-hand lane, which we just discussed, and either lane depending on traffic. No, if you're turning right, it's gonna be the right-hand lane. So it's gonna be that answer. What must you do when the amber light is flashing at a Pelican crossing? Let me just explain this as well, because it's one of the crossings, and again, pupils get confused with crossings. A Pelican is the only one out of all the lights that has a flashing amber. The reason why it flashes amber, so from a driver's point of view, you know what color's coming next. It goes green, steady amber, red, and then it goes flashing amber and back to green. That's the all it works in. Now, if it's flashing amber from a very test point of view, you give way to people already on the crossing. From a driving test point of view, you can go on the flashing amber if it's safe to do so. So we're looking for something along the lines, give way to people, pedestrians already on the crossing. Give way to pedestrians already on the crossing. There you go, first one out. Still read the others just in case. As I always say, read all the answers just in case. Stop and wait for the red light. It's gonna to go to green, so you're not waiting for the red light. Give way to pedestrians waiting to cross. Not give way to pedestrians waiting to cross, even though these two looks or sound similar. Because if you're gonna give way to pedestrians waiting to cross, they're on the pavement and you're waiting on a flashing amber, you can go, providing it's safe to do so. So you don't have to stop and give them way. But you must give way to pedestrians already on the crossing because it means they're probably in front of your car or on the pathway. Stop and wait for the green light. As I said, for a driving lesson, you don't have to stop and wait for the green light. You can go on the flashing amber as long as it's safe to do so. 
What does it mean if a sign at a bus lane shows no times of operation? If there's no times of operation, it means it's a bus lane 24 hours. Simple as that. If it's got times underneath, it tells you what times you can or can't use it, depending on how you want to read it. But on this one, it's got no time, so it's 24 hours that bus lane's in operation. Do not go in there. The lane isn't in operation. Nope. The lane is in operation 24 hours a day. Yes. The lane is only in operation daylight hours, no. The lane is only in operation at peak times, no. Which type of crossing allows cyclists to ride across the pedestrians? Again, this goes back to the crossings. So, little clue in this one. Again, if you don't know your crossings, little clue. Which type of crossing allows cyclists, one, to ride across with pedestrians, two, two can. That's what it stands for. Two can cross at the same time. So cyclists is one, Pedestrians is two, two can. Um, as much as I say read all the answers, you don't need to read that because there's only gonna be one answer in terms of the crossing with that, as long as you select the right one, obviously. So this one's two can. I'll just go for the others just to break it down. Zebras is your black and white stripes on the floor and your black and white poles. Pelican is the one with the flashing sequence. Remember, you can go on the flashing amber and puffin is your sensors and that's only gonna change back to red and amber once the pedestrian's gone. You are approaching zebra crossing, what should you do if a pedestrians are waiting to cross? Safety, if pedestrians are waiting to cross, safety, you are driving, you should be slowing down and be prepared to stop, something along those lines. You want good attitude. Use your headlights to indicate they can cross. No, you should not be flashing anyone. Give way to older and infirm people only. No, it makes no sense with that. Slow down and be prepared to stop, yes and wave at them to cross the road. You should not wave anybody across the road. Remember, especially on the driving test, you are being assessed if you're safe to drive. So the question is, how can you assess for someone else to cross the road for it to be safe for them? Don't wave anybody across the road. On your driving lessons or on your driving test, do not wave anybody across. But the answer can be slow down and be prepared to, and be prepared to stop if I get my words out. When should you flash your headlights at other road users? The only time you should flash your headlights at other road users is to warn of your presence, alert them that you are there. That's the only time. And beeping a horn is the same thing as well. In the highway code, it says both of them are the same. Alert of your presence or warn people that you are there. That's what we're looking for. When letting them know that you are there, first one. When showing that you are giving way, you shouldn't be doing that. I know some people do flash their lights, but flash your lights on a driving test and that's over. Um, you're gonna fail for that. When showing that you're about to turn, no. When telling them that you have the right of way, again, no. On the road where trams operate, which vehicles will be most at risk from tram rails? Right, this comes up a lot as well. A few tram questions are coming up a lot based on the feedback we get from our pupils. The tram lines are grooved. They, they are grooved, they're not flat. It's gonna be cyclists who are most at risk. So cars, no. Cyclists, yes. Um, lorries, no. And buses, no. It's gonna be cyclists because trams can't steer to avoid. When should you use your vehicle's horn? Similar question, that's the way it comes up on the theory test sometimes. Similar answer, I've just alert about your presence, to alert others to your presence. To signal your annoyance, definitely no. To greet other road users, no. To allow you right away, no. When should you leave a two second gap between your vehicle and the one in front? When it's raining, no. When it's raining, when it's wet, it's four second gap. When it's dry, yes. When you're doing 40 miles an hour or more, you should be leaving a two second gap. When it's raining or wet, it's a four second gap. When it's icy, it's 10 times more or 10 times longer. When it's foggy, you've got to leave a distance that is safe for you to stop in, in terms of that. But it's gonna be two seconds when it's dry, doing 40 miles an hour more is the full answer, to be fair. What should you do if you're driving a slow moving vehicle on a narrow winding road? Just read that again, breaking it down. What should you do if you are driving a slow moving vehicle on a narrow winding road? Remember, we're looking for a safe option on this. So you're driving a slow moving vehicle. Wave of vehicles behind to come past. Once it's got wave, it's not gonna be safe. You can eliminate that straight away. You don't have to even read the rest. 
Pull in when you can to let the vehicles behind overtake. Pull in when you can, as a possible. It says when you can, in other words, when it's safe to do so. Keep well out to stop overtaking dangerously. First of all, stopping cars overtaking is not safe. I remember what the ferry test is about. Yep, yeah, safety, safety, safety. Um, and give a left signal when it's safe for vehicles to overtake. This is what I'm talking about as well. The answer says give a left signal when it's safe for vehicles to overtake you. It's got the word safe in there. As I said to you, it doesn't always work, but remember your answer has to make sense. Give a left signal. Why would you give a left signal? It doesn't make sense. So it's gonna be that one, pull in when you can, because you should be left anyway. And there you have it. So hopefully that category has helped you with your theory training. If you got any questions, any comments, please leave them below and I will address any of them. Go off and watch another one of these Study With Me series in the playlist.